It's hard to have a condition and then so consistently have normal test results. But then to have the stark pain every day as a reminder, no, there's something very wrong here. Especially when you don't know what you have, it's a nightmare. It is really frustrating for patients to be treated as a medical mystery. While all of this investigation is going on, they're disabled and suffering this whole time that they're waiting for a diagnosis. Just being sick is terrible. You feel like this body that you have trusted your whole life has betrayed you in this really major way. And now, nobody can tell you what that major way is. I've seen a lot of different specialists, easily over 50 different physicians in the last 15 years. I would wait sometimes months for an appointment and I would um, be in constant pain. Patients don't want to be sick. They don't want to have these symptoms. I think it's our obligation to try to figure out, to the best of our ability, which patients have some underlying condition that needs to be diagnosed and treated. In medicine, we treat patients. We do not treat images, radiographic findings, or lab tests. Patients can have abnormalities, and not every abnormality needs to be fixed. This is the importance of the diagnosis. Suffering for 15 years is a terrible thing. I don't know how common it is. It shouldn't be common at all. Beginning in the second year of high school, uh, she developed this intense abdominal pain every time she exercised. I would literally feel like something was writhing around inside me. I would feel like there was a snake in my abdomen. So she would run perhaps 100 yards and get uh, tremendous abdominal pain. And I just sort of got used to it, but I would still have the attacks of much more intense pain. Abdominal pain has a lot of different reasons, so it's not uncommon for us to see complicated cases. Whenever we see those, there's always communication with different specialists to make sure that we're on the right track and we're treating the right condition. The intensity of her pain and the fact that it had always occurred with exercise, I mean, that was the clue. I did a lot of research on my own trying to figure out what was wrong with me. As a scientist myself, it was really important for me to get something quantifiable to hold on to. Courtney was frustrated. She was disabled from the condition and she just wanted to get treatment started so she could function in everyday life. Her abdominal pains went back during childhood. She had migraine history. People who have migraines have that symptom elsewhere. And abdominal pain is something that we commonly see in the headache world. A bell definitely went off when I saw that there may be a family history of migraine because there's certainly a connection between the gut and the brain. Your brain and your stomach have a lot of the same neurotransmitters, so a lot of the things that affect your mind can also affect your stomach. I diagnosed Courtney with chronic migraine and abdominal migraine. Abdominal migraine is a type of migraine disorder that most commonly affects children and adolescents. We often see classic migraine or chronic migraine with abdominal migraine. And so when we think of treatment options, we try to think of treatment options that target both. After about eight weeks, I just woke up one morning and my pain just wasn't there. And that was something that I dreamt about, but it was something that I didn't ever actually know was going to happen. Courtney's case is a great example of multidisciplinary medicine, starting with a primary care doctor, seeing an endocrinologist, and also a vascular surgeon, and ultimately gastroenterologist and neurologist coming up with her diagnosis. They took the condition seriously. And so regardless of what they personally thought about my symptoms or about me, they took their responsibility to figure out what was going on very seriously. When a patient comes to see a doctor, it's really the meeting of two experts. There's no way for the patient to know what I know, but there's also no way for me to know what the patient knows except to ask them and to listen to them and to believe them. Not being believed by doctors is perhaps one of the worst feelings I've ever had, besides the actual physical pain. It's a terrible thing to have someone say, you know, you say that narcotics only work, so you're probably just looking for drugs. No one else 
can tell you, no test can tell you how this patient feels. Getting to know the patients on a personal level, what they cherish and what they enjoy doing in their life on a daily basis is very important because by knowing the patients, you will be able to achieve your goals of treatment. Because this is why we do medicine. When somebody comes in with a symptom for 15 years and you know, help them and they're pain-free, it feels fabulous. Her life has been completely changed since receiving the diagnosis. She's had a happy ending.